So in this latest video of fractions, we'll be looking and focusing on adding and subtracting fractions. Now, prior to watching this video, I would strongly recommend that you are very, very comfortable with simplifying fractions and converting improper fractions to mixed numbers and mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, there will be a set of notes and some worksheets for you to practice everything you've learned in this video in the description below. So the first thing we need to refresh on is just some of the vocabulary that's used in fractions. So here in the, if we look at our first element here, so our top number in a fraction is what we call the numerator and the bottom number is what we call the denominator. And I'll try in this video to kind of make sure that you use the correct maths vocabulary just so you get a bit of practice and it makes a bit more sense using the word numerator and denominator rather than top number and bottom number. Now the next fact is that the word proper. Now a proper fraction, a proper fraction is where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, and that's what we call a proper fraction because it actually represents a part of something that is whole. Now an improper fraction is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So this is where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, and this is sometimes or more formally known as a top-heavy fraction. And then the last sort of thing that we kind of need to refresh on is that if a fraction is improper, then it can be written as what we call a mixed number. Now, if you're wanting a bit of a recap on how you convert improper fractions to mixed numbers, there is another video which I'll attach a link at the end of this video. Now, when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, so before we add and subtract fractions, there are a couple of things that you can do to make your calculation easier to do and more likely to get the correct answer quickly and attaining full marks. Now, the following checks are in order. So the first thing you check for is ultimately is, is are the denominators the same? So are the bottom numbers the same? And they have to be the same before you can add or subtract. And the second thing you then need to check is to check to see if any of the fractions can be simplified or what we call cancelled down into their simplest form. Now you only do the second check if the denominators are different to start with. You don't simplify the fraction if the denominator is the same. And again, if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I will explain in the next couple of slides. And the last thing that you need to be able to do is make sure that what will make your life easier when dealing with fractions is being confident in your mental multiplications and division, which will be a huge bonus when finding the common denominators or simplifying fractions. So if you're not too great with multiplying and knowing your times tables and being able to divide mentally in your head, then I would strongly recommend that having a bit of practice of that will make your ability to work with fractions a lot stronger. Now, when it comes to adding, subtracting fractions where the denominators are the same, the key thing you need to make sure is that when the denominators are the same, the only thing you have to do is add or subtract the numerators together. And that's the only calculation you then need to do. You do not, never will ever, you ever add or subtract the denominators. So let's have a look at these questions. So here, if we look at number one, and I'll try and use a different color pen, let's go for pink. So here I can see that my two denominators are the same. So the only thing I've got to do is add because I'm adding the two numerators together. So I've got two plus one over five, which equals three over five. And there is my final answer. Now, the key thing to note before I sort of whiz through these six examples is you always want to remember to check your final answers to see if they can be simplified or if they become an improper fraction, can you write it as a mixed number? And again, if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about or how to convert an improper to a mixed number, there is another video. So again, looking at number two. So again, I check to make sure my denominators are the same and they are brilliant. So all I've got to do is add. And the reason why I'm adding is because I've got an add. I'm adding these two fractions together. So I've got seven plus three, which is 10 over eight. And there is my final answer. Now, as you can see, I've got an improper fraction here because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Or the top number is bigger than the denominator. So here I can write this as a mixed number. Now, a quick mental way of doing this is if you just follow how I'm saying. So here we're going to have a big number, we're going to have a fraction. Now, a fraction is still going to stay the same. So here I'm counting how many eights go into 10. That's going to be one, remainder two. And then from this, now, what we can do here is because we've got the fraction of two eights, I can simplify that to make it a quarter. So the final answer for this is going to be one and one quarter. And then looking at number three, again, I'm checking my denominators are both five, so that's fine. So I've got seven plus four over five equals 11 over five. Now, you don't have to write this. If you wanted to, you could do this in your head. 
and go straight to the answer and that is going to be absolutely fine but like i said it's good practice that once you establish that this is a your answer is a improper fraction which in this one is we then write it as a mixed number so how many fives go into 11 that's going to be two remainder one and our original divisor was five so it's two and one fifth now let's have a look at some division um, some subtraction questions i say so again check to make sure that the denominators are the same so they are so that's brilliant so we've got 12 take away 7 over 15 so that's 12 take away 7 which is 5 over 15 now this one I want to check to make sure I can simplify so here we've got a proper fraction but again I'm going to check to make sure I can simplify which I can because what goes into both 5 and 15 that's going to be 5 so it gives me a final answer of one third and then moving on to question 5 again denominators are the same brilliant so I've got 17 take away 7 over 18 which gives me 10 over 18 so let me just make sure that 10 doesn't look like 16 so let's try that again there we go and then we to simplify the fraction so here we've got 5 over 9 and there is my final answer and then finally for these set of questions again denominators are the same so I've got 17 take away 1 over 6 so that's 16 over 6 now from this I would simplify it first so again that would become 8 over 3 and then that way you you won't have to simplify your mixed number if you simplify early so here how many 3 is going to 8 that's going to be 2 remainder 2 and our original divisor was 3 and there is our final answer now just going back to question 2 if let's say I had the answer of 10 over 8 which I did now obviously from this I can simplify this as 5 over 4 and then I converted it into a mixed number, then I wouldn't have to simplify my final answer. So here, how many fours go into five? One, and I've got a remainder of one, and I've got a quarter, and there is my final answer. So simplifying early does make your life a little bit easier, particularly when you've done the actual adding or subtracting uh, that you need to do with your numerators. So now let's have a look at adding and subtracting where the denominators are different. So in order to add or subtract fractions together, the denominators must be the same. And this is the most important thing that you need to be checking whenever you see fractions and an add or a subtraction in between them. Is your aim is to try and get the denominator same. If they already are, brilliant. It'd be classed as more of a low level question, but if the denominator is already the same, but you don't need to worry about this. You just simply add or subtract the numerators as we've previously done. Now there are a couple of methods on how we deal with fractions. If you look on the internet or look in a revision guide or ask your teacher, they will show you 101 ways of being able to work with fractions. But I'm going to go for the most, the two most commonly used ways of adding and subtracting fractions when the denominators are different. Now, the first method I'm going to look at is finding a common multiple between the denominators. So in other words, what we're going to do is when the denominators are different, we're going to try and find a common number that appears in both their times tables. Now, this method is the preferred method, but will require some mental math skills of multiplying uh, multiplying tables. Now, it may take a while for you to get to practice and get correct, but it is the most efficient and it's going to make your life a lot easier if you do practice this method. So let's have a look at some examples. Now, in the first one here, you can see we have got two. We've got a fraction we are adding and our denominators are different. So here I've got one over i'm going to write the denominators in different color three plus four over nine now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write down three now you can obviously do this in your head which is ideal because you don't want to be spending 10 minutes doing one fraction question so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down three and i'm going to write down the three times table now how many of the three times table do i need to do well that's entirely up to you um, but I certainly would write down the first couple. Now, obviously, if you're really good with times tables and you know you're, multiply, you're, you're multiplying, then this isn't going to be, you can do this in your head. It's not going to be a problem at all. And if I write down the nine times table. Now, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a number that the smallest number that appears in both the two lists that I've written. Now, as you can see, that nine appears in both of those two lists. So 9 is going to be my common denominator. So here is my question, and I'm going to rewrite both of these so that I've got a 9 at the bottom. Now, looking at the first fraction, which is 1 third, I've got 1 
2, 3. So what I need to do is I need to multiply both these two numbers by 3, so I get a common denominator of 9. So 1 times 3, which is going to be 3. And then for the second fraction, I've already got a 9, and that's 1. So I need to multiply this fraction by 1. So 4 times 1, which is 4. And there you go. And now I've, you can see that my denominators are the same. So the only thing left for me to do is simply add the numerators together, in which I get the final answer of 7 over 9. And there you go. So with number 2, so let me just rub all of this out. So with question two, I've got one eighth plus three fifths. So again, you can see that my denominators are different. So I start off writing the eight times table. And again, how far you get is entirely up to you. And write down the five times table. So I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40 and what you want to do is you stop when you see a your lowest common multiple so in other words the smallest number that appears in both their lists so here you can see that my smallest my common denominator in this case is going to be 40 so then I then now need to see what do I need to multiply the first fraction by so you need to multiply the first fraction by 1 2 3 4 5 so I multiply this fraction by 5 and I do 1 times 5 which is 5 and then looking at the second one, so here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 8. So I've got 3 times 8, which is 24. And then adding those up, I get 5 plus 24 over 40, which gives me 29 over 40. You want to check to see, can you simplify it? No, you can't. And there is my final answer. Then moving on to question three. So here we've got 18 and we've got 10. Now knowing 18 times table is gonna be a little bit difficult. So let's just start by writing the question out. Now, one thing you wanna do is, as it says, the denominators are different. But we want to check, can you simplify the fractions? Well, I can simplify this first fraction because what goes into both 12 and 18? Well, that's going to be 6. So divide both numbers by 6 and I get 2 thirds. Now, the whole purpose of doing this is to try and make your life easier. What's better, the 3 times table or the 18 times table? Definitely the 3 times table. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the three times table. Now I'm pretty confident with my 10 times table, so I'm going to leave that one out. So here I've got three, and then I've got three, six, nine, 12. And I'm going to stop until I see a number that appears that I know appears in the 10 times table. So I've got uh, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. There we go, 30. So looking at the 10 times table, I've got 10, 20, 30. So looking at this, I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 10. So if I multiply this by 10, I get 20 over 30. And again, I should have set up my denominators. And then for the second fraction, I need to multiply that by 1, 2, 3. And so here I've got 21. And so looking at this, we've got 41 over 30. Now that becomes an improper fraction. So I don't want to think, can I simplify it? No, I can't. So then I'll go straight into converting it. So how many 30 is going to 41? Well, that's going to be one. Remainder of 11 and the original divisor was 30. And there is my final answer. So let's have a look, uh, quickly have a look at some division. So looking at number four, again, I've got 14 over 15. Oh, take away. This time, minus 2 over 5. Now, one thing that you may be thinking is probably going into our second method, which we're going to look at, is why can't you just multiply the two denominators together to get the common denominator? Now, that is absolutely fine, but you might be making your life a little bit more difficult, and it will involve more simplifying at the end of the um, task when you get your final answer. 
So it's just a case of whatever you prefer. As long as you get the right answer, that's all that matters. How you get there, as long as it's mathematical, it's going to be absolutely fine. So looking at this, again, I've got my two different denominators. So I've got 5 and I've got 15. So I've got 15, 30, 45, 16. I've got 5, 10, 15. So my common multiple is going to be 15. So I've got 15, 15. So the first fraction has already got 15, so I just need to times that by 1. And the second fraction, well, that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So I times that by 3. So I've got 2 times 3, which is 6. And I am taking away. So I've got 14 take away 6, now that my denominators are the same, over 15, which gives me 8 over 15. Can I simplify it? No. So that there is my final answer. With number 5, now, if you want to have a go at number five and six by yourselves, that's entirely up to you. Um, pause the video and then I'll just wait and then press play again and I'll go through the answers. So here we've got seven over nine minus three over five. Now, the smallest number that appears in both their lists is going to be 45. Now, for this, what I need to do is I've got 45, 45. Now you could get away with rather than writing the time save, as long as you know what the common denominator is going to be, then that's going to be absolutely fine. So I need to multiply this first fraction. Well, how many nines go into 45? Well, that's going to be 5. So I do 7 times 5, which is 35. And then for the second one, how many 5s go into 45? Well, that's going to be 9. So I've got 3 times 9, which is going to be 27. And there we go. And then the last thing for me to do is then simply take the two numbers away, or the numerators, I should say over 45 which gives me 8 over 45 which cannot be simplified and then finally looking at number 6 I've got 4 over 7 minus 1 over 3 and our common denominator here is going to be 21 so how many 4s how many 7s go into 21 well that's going to be 3 so I times 4 by 3 which is 12 how many 3s go into 21 well that's going to be 7 so I do 1 times 7 which is 7 12 take away 7 is going to give me 5 so it's 5 over 21 and there is my final answer now the second common method is basically what we kind of hovered about before and again this might be your choice of what you're doing now the difficult thing with this is that you may incur multiplying double digit numbers with double digit numbers and it may be unnecessary now in many of the examples that we did before this method is pretty much exactly the same however like i said when we look at questions like number one and number three you'll see how that doesn't quite you're making it more complicated in some cases now before we get started all i've done here is just applied a bit of algebra now a b c and d are just numbers and like could be anything so for example if we look at question one a is going to be one b is going to be three c is going to be four and d is going to be nine now the plus minus is something that you probably may not have seen before but that basically means that you can choose plus or minus and that's that's uh, all it is so it's just saving me time of writing it again uh, with one with plus and one with minus so don't be too concerned about trying to find that on your calculator so looking at this, what we're going to do here is so this method involves multiplying the fraction by the other fraction's denominator. So looking at this first question, if I start look with question one, we've got one over, and let's do the denominators in different colours. So I've got three plus four over nine. Now for this, what we're going to do is now this the denominator of the other fraction is a nine, so I'm going to multiply this by nine. This the other Denominator is 3, so I'm going to multiply this by 3. So here I've got 3 times 1, uh, sorry, 9 times 1, which is 9, 3 times 9, which is 27, plus 4 times 3, which is 12, and 9 times 3, which is 27. And you can see here that all I need to then do, now that denominators are the same, is simply add the two numerators together. So here I've got 21 over 27. Can that be simplified? Yes. I could divide both numbers by 3, so I've got 7 over and it's going to be 9 and there is my final answer and then looking at number 2 so here we've got a takeaway and a takeaway doesn't really make a difference or subtraction I should say 
not going Uber Eats. Um, so here we've got seven over eight, my, or just eight, whichever, or, or no more delivery services are available. Uh, so here we've got seven eighths take away three fifths. So again, I'm going to multiply this fraction by five. And I'm going to multiply this second fraction by eight. And if I do that correctly, I've got seven times five, which is 35. 7 times 8, uh, sorry, 8 times 5, which is 40, and then I've got 3 times 8, which is 24, and I've got 5 times 8, which is 40. And then adding the two numerators together, I get 59 over 40. Can I simplify that? No. So I then go straight into writing this as a mixed number. How many 40 is going to 59? That's going to be 1, and remainder of 19, and original divisor is 40, and there is my final answer. And then finally, for question three, now this is where it gets a little bit more challenging. Now I should be able to spot that this fraction here can be simplified. And that's something that I really should do first. But if I didn't simplify, let's have a look at what happens. So here I've got 12 over 15 plus 7 over 10. So again, let's just use a bit of colour. So I've got 15 and I've got 10. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 10 and this fraction by 15. So here I've got, now times it by 10, that's not a problem. I've got 120 and I've got 150. Plus 7 times 15, well again, 7 times 15. So again, I've got 5, 3 is going to be 105 over 150. Now you can see now by using this method the numbers are ridiculously big and although they might be fine to add yet yeah, they're quite simple for me to add but again it's going to require more work and if you do more work in dealing with more digits then there's a more you're increasing your chance of making a silly mistake but again let's have a look go through the process so 120 plus 105 is going to be 225 and that's all over 150. So now what I've got to do is simplify this fraction. So I've got to try and think to myself, what number goes into both 225 and 150? So again, if you continue dividing, you'll get to the final answer of 3 over 2. And again, it's not something that you want to look at. So it's a case of how many 25s or it's actually going to be, um, let's have a look. Uh, 75 is going to be the biggest divisor yet out of 75. But again, how do you know? We just have to keep dividing by 5 until you get sleepy. But if I divided both numbers by 75, I'd get to the final answer of 3 over 2, which then can be written as 1 and a half. So hopefully step th the question 3 kind of identifies that, yes, the method does work, but there is a flaw. And the flaw is dealing with multiplying with big numbers and then having to simplify a fraction that involves three digits or maybe two digits that might not be easy. So... I would try and opt for method one. Nine out of 10 times you're doing the same thing anyway, but it's just a case of if you were to get a question like question three, then obviously this method that we've just done is not gonna be the easiest. Now, the next thing we move on to is adding and subtracting a fraction with a whole number. Now for this, um, Obviously, when you're working with fractions, you kind of need, need to write all the numbers as fractions. So when you have got a fraction and a whole number, then what you need to do is convert the whole number into a fraction. Now, this is really simple to do. So the only thing you need to do to turn a whole number into a fraction is simply write it over one. So, for example, with question one, I've got two thirds plus three. So all I'm going to do is just write over one. And now you can see I've got two fractions. So again, now I've got to try and find a common denominator. So I've got three and I've got one. So the smallest number that appears in both the three times table and the one times table is three. So I multiply this first fraction by one, this second fraction by three. So here I get two times one, which is two, three times three, which is nine. And then just adding two plus nine over three, which gives me 11 over three which as it's an improper fraction, I can write that as a mixed number, which is going to give me three and two thirds. Now, a common question I will get asked is, do I always need to um, write an improper fraction as a mixed number? Now, generally speaking, depending on what level you are and what the question's saying, yes and no. 
if a question doesn't ask, explicitly ask you to write your improper fractions as a mixed number, then you should still get marks for, let's say, writing 11 over 3. But if a question did insist you write it as a mixed number, then obviously, yes, you would lose marks. Um, but again, it's very good practice that, for you to do it. Um, it's something that really you should do depending on how like, high level maths you want to do. But like I said, if I if a question didn't say, then I probably should get full marks for writing 11 over 3 because I have added the fractions together. But it's very good practice for you to be able to write it as a mixed number. So again, finally, looking at question 2, I've got 5 minus 3 fifths. So again, I'm going to write this 5 over 1. So now I've got two fractions. So again, I'm looking for a common denominator, which in this case is 5. So I multiply this first fraction by 5. And again, you're multiplying both the top and the bottom. So it's going to be 5 times 5, which is 25. The first fraction is already there. So I just times that by 1, giving me 22 over 5. I want to check. Can I simplify this? No, I can't. So then write this. So there's my final improper answer as an improper fraction. How many 5s go into 22? That's going to be 4. Remainder 2. Original divisor is 5. And there is my final answer. Now for adding and subtracting involving mixed numbers, see the video in the link. And for multiplying and dividing fractions, again, have a look, click on the fractions playlist. Again, I'll attach a link at the end of this video for you to have a go at and practice those, which will evidently be the next stage on this. Now there will be a worksheet with some answers in the description below for you to practice everything you've learned in this video.